love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said, So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to peoples who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today. But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth so they, that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forgot, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise to the gospel after. someone called your venerable ancestors dirty. I'm not going to go through the list of ethnic slights and slurs that we've all heard, but dirty is an equal opportunity insult. So widely used that in the end, everyone else is dirty but you and your people who must be clean by comparison. 
in our nation of immigrants, it was a great way to put some distance between those new people who had just washed up on our shores. And in case you were wondering, the dirty ones are always the ones who got here just after your people did. Mark's Gospel shows us that this is a very old way of mistreating our neighbors. When the Pharisees and the scribes see that Jesus' disciples are eating with dirty hands, these observant Jews grumble that Jesus' disciples are not honoring the tradition of the elders. In the case of the scribes and Pharisees, observant didn't only refer to their religious practices. You've noticed how they were always looking, watching, observing, gathering information to use against Jesus and his movement. These religious authorities well understood the value of surveillance as a means to control people. And it works especially well when the people being observed aren't sure they're being watched. The scribes were versed in the law, and we might reasonably ex expect them to have a snappy scriptural explanation for the condemnation they dish out. But the scriptures failed them this time. Rather, then cite some specific law that was being violated, they wonder why the disciples don't follow the traditions of the elders. Now there is no book in the Bible called The Traditions of the Elders. Jesus' opponents deferred to tradition, not law, because there is no law among the 600 plus laws in the Torah that tells us to wash our hands before dinner. Some of the instructions Mark reports, like washing kitchen utensils and bronze pots, were meant for priests and the common good. But these unwritten rules were part of what was called the Oral Torah, not written down, based on the laws of Moses, but added later, and not necessarily by God. In Mark's account, the disciples' hands aren't dirty, they are common. Common referred to things that were ordinary and not special. Common hands are like the ones that are attached to your arms. And before I distribute communion, I will use a hand sanitizer. It won't make my hands holy, just a little cleaner, but that is a distinction that still matters in hospitals and care facilities I visit, like this symbolic hand washing that mattered to Jewish religious leaders. When those religious authorities ask why Jesus' followers eat with common hands, Jesus calls them hypocrites. <laughs> That was a word for an actor in Jesus' time, someone who played a role, someone whose words did not align with their heart, like the people Jesus was calling out. He quotes Isaiah at them, but he also takes their side in a way. The scribes, the Pharisees, and Jesus all saw themselves of de as defenders of the faith as they understood it. Pharisees campaigned for all Jews to follow the purity laws that only the priests were obliged to observe, and the scribes were professional interpreters of the law. And what troubled Jesus was the misalignment of their hearts and their mouths. He quotes Isaiah, these people say they are loyal to me, they say wonderful things about me, but they are not really loyal to me, they worship, their worship consists of nothing but man-made ritual. And there is the larger lesson revealed that man-made part. Instead of the true worship they owed to God, the people honored God with their lips while their hearts were far away, unconnected to those words they spoke. And Jesus goes deeper, drilling down, quoting Isaiah to indict those who tried to hide their plans from the Lord. They are as good as dead who do their work in secret and boast. Who sees us? Who knows what we're doing? When he calls out the hypocrisy of these professional gawkers who prefer that their own works go unseen, Jesus tells them that they could run but they could not hide, or rather we cannot hide because the passage is proof that the problem is us. And blaming the other guy is as old a trick as calling them dirty. It is not about being dirty. It is almost never about being dirty or unclean. Their enthusiasm for hand washing is meant to distract from the exclusion they practice. With no law concerning hand washing before eating, they were free to create their own and call those rules ancient. Again, from Isaiah, when their deeds are done in the dark, they say, who sees us? They happened upon a great time saver as well. 
Because when we create our own rituals and rules to exclude our neighbors, we condemn them at the same time. The ancient traditions they cite functioned as a kind of popular Judaism, passed down orally as diverse as the lands and cultures where Jews lived in Jesus' time. Jesus congratulated his audience. audience how clever you are at setting aside the commandments of God in order to maintain your tradition. That was just before his closing argument, that nothing goes into a person can defile or make common, but the things that defile come from within us. Jesus is reaching back to that distinction between the heart and the mouth as prevalent and problematic and false in his time as it was in Isaiah's or ours. The authorities were hypocrites, just like he said, following traditions their ancestors had designed, devised instead of following the laws God gave them. The disconnect between what we preach and what we practice is the hypocrisy we create. It indulges us and vilifies and excludes others, but it cannot make us better or purer. When we participate with God in our salvation, we are cleansed by his love and his mercy. When we reject the fullness of the love he has for us, we are left to rely on our own human tendencies to create our own flawed systems that judge and exclude. Our solutions bring us no peace and no cleansing, only confusion and division. We find ourselves judging those we should be supporting and caring for, and we see how dismally our little creations compared to the universe of life, liberty, and salvation that God sends to us. We like to view Jesus as a rebel whose ministry was meant to imitate some countercultural clash. He was, and he did, but this time he shares his opponent's concerns for greater faith among all believers. He only objects to the ways they carry out their project. Because in the end, observing comes down to either following or watching. The disconnect between what we practice and what we preach is our own invention designed to show ourselves in our best light, to be better somehow, always Instagram ready. When we participate in God's salvation, we are cleansed by his love and mercy. But when we reject the fullness of his love for us, we allow ourselves to indulge in versions of ourselves with no need for the love of God that comes to us. We risk becoming part of a mechanism that feeds on strife and division instead of fostering faith among those we should be caring for and supporting. The passage ends with a long list of evil things we humans do or think of doing. It reads like a list of the Ten Commandments with a few deadly sins thrown in for good measure. The work of the law is to pat evil and avoid defilement, letting ourselves become common. But both these things originate with us. The Pharisees could not sanctify life even by washing their hands before dinner, because purification and sanctification are God's work. God's law, God's salvation, God's care for us, that is what comes to us from God. And what comes from God cannot defile us or make us common. We do an okay job of that ourselves. The scribes and Pharisees had turned it all upside down. They watched, they accused, they put their mouths to work spewing accusations based on shaky claims to deflect attention from their own failings. Wouldn't it be easier to follow God's laws, to participate with God in revealing his will for us, to let the Creator provide for us and empower us? It sounds better than the alternative to the ordinary, common. Jesus tells us that evil things come in, evil things come from within that defile a person. But who can see the heart? Who can judge our intentions, our hidden desires? Only God, of course. And that's what led Jesus' opponents to this problem. They failed to see the difference between God's laws and the gods that they had invented for their own convenience. These laws they concocted to better suit their needs married ignorance to willfulness. The real sanctification, the cleansing of our hearts, is not something we can do, and is something we cannot accomplish without God. Amen.
Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the Church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. God, in every generation, give the Church a sense of purpose and belonging. Sustain and build up leaders and lay people as we accompany one another in our life with Christ. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of creation, you name humans as co-creators with you. Where the earth cries out in pain, bring wholeness. Guide governments and industry that environmental laws and practices seek to heal and not harm. Bring relief and justice to peoples and places suffering from climate catastrophe. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sovereign God, we pray for the local communities represented here, rural and urban, established and new, prosperous and struggling. Lead those in authority to seek the good of all through their words and actions, and to mentor others in honest and generous ways. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Healing God, you draw near to all who are hurting. Be with all who desire relief from chronic and acute illness, cancer, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Strengthen healthcare workers, therapists, and caregivers. Tend to those who are close to our hearts, especially Lucy, Jeff, Alice, Linda, Duane, Lenore, Barbara, Jan, Jim, Ty, Dick, Jenny, Aaron, and Melissa. Merciful God, receive our prayer. On this Labor Day weekend, we remember and give thanks for all who have fought for the rights of workers. Continue to improve working conditions and establish fair wages so that all people may thrive. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Comforting God, console us as we mourn our departed. We hold fast to the promise that death has been defeated by our Savior, Jesus Christ. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, Holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Peace of Christ be with you always. And yeah. also with you. <laughs> Thank you. 
source of every good gift of our creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered around this table, we, your children, unite in this song. The earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. O God, try you, you create the worlds, you uphold the living, you embrace the dead. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Strengthen us for our journey with this meal, the body and blood of Christ. Give us a future that trusts in you. Empowered by your promises, we rise from our deaths to praise you again. The earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. Let us pray using the words Jesus taught us. Our Father and I, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. 
trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come, here is your God.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen. Amen.